Thanks. Um, yeah, my, my name is Mark Motz. I work for the Qt company now. And I want to talk about QString, Q any string view, something that I did for my former employer, but it's in Qt. Um, that's a variant string view. And I want to tell you why, even if you don't use Qt, uh, you should care. So uh, in this talk, I will briefly present some history. That's basically when you download the slides afterwards that you have the links to the uh, to the blogs and uh, and uh, YouTube videos. Then we'll talk about what's there now and uh, what uh, I intend to do in the future. So all this started with the introduction of QStringView in 2017 and Qt 5.10, um, which is basically the QString version of standard StringView. And there was a series of blogs and talks about that. Um, and in uh, meeting C++ 17, I also did a lightning talk called the most important API design principle question mark that introduced a non-owning interface idiom, uh, version one back then. And uh, at this meeting C++, I did a talk called coroutines as an API principle and that introduced uh, NOI version two. And all these feed into um, the notion that um, you should not use owning containers in the API. You should use views if you can, otherwise coroutines are, are an option. So with that, um, let's see what uh, we have in Qt at the moment. So QStringView and uh, assorted classes in Qt 6. Um, we have merged QString tokenizer um, that's basically a C++11 uh, implementation of a coroutine to split strings um, with quite some interesting features. Qlatin1 string has uh, magically survived, uh, even though it was scheduled to be removed, but um, uh, we still have it because Latin1 is still um, important encoding. You can't do everything in UTF-8 uh, uh, because UTF-8 has uh, variable length encoding, so you can't get the length of a string um, in, in characters, in uh, code points, whatever that is, um, easily. And uh, Latin one string has this property and uh, US ASCII as a subset of that is too important to just let it go. We have a UTF-8 string view too now, and we have QAny string view. And this is what I want to talk uh, to you about. So what is QAny string view? QAny string view is a variant string view type. Think standard variant of the aforementioned three views, Q string view, Q Latin one string view, uh, it should be called, but for legacy reasons it isn't, and uh, Q UTF-8 string view. Yeah. So whatever you pass to it, um, it will figure out automatically what the encoding is. Um, that's easy for conscar 8 T stars, that's UTF-8, obviously. Q Latin one string is Latin one. And cons car stars for uh, for legacy reasons, for that's just a cute policy that uh, UTF-8 is the default encoding. So everything that's in car stars, byte arrays, etc., is encoded as UTF-8 or interpreted to be in UTF-8. And car 16T, cons car star, uh, Q car star, and so on, they are UTF-16. Unlike QStringView, you can also construct a QAny string view from a single character um, that was deemed too magic uh, for by at the time that QStringView was added. Um, because, of course, uh, as soon as you um, pass a Q uh, character to a string view and you just store the string view and don't immediately pass it to a function, it becomes invalid. Um, because internally, of course, you take the address of the argument and store it in the string view, and that you can only do when you immediately pass it on to a function and not when you store it in a local variable. So extending that further, any string view can now even take car 32t and decomposes that into a two-character um, sequence for UTF-16, because car 32, UTF-32 uh, is not supported by Qt. Um, that is also policy decision policy decision. And you can even uh, construct it from a QString builder to expression template. Um, we have this expression templates that uh, if you concatenate uh, strings and you uh, set the correct um, 
command line options, uh, compiler flags, um, then you get an expression template uh, out of that and you only get a final string constructed once you assign it to an actual string. Um, that should work, but I just got a bug report this week uh, that it doesn't. <laughs> so uh, I need to look what, what's wrong there. So um, here's how to use any string view, for example, in, in a function called set object name, which traditionally has taken a Q string uh, by const ref, like so many things in Qt. Um, and if you look at the line three, four, and five in the upper block there, um, the first two are allocating. And the third one is a statically constructed instance of a Q string, so it does not allocate, but it uh, returns uh, from a nested lambda inside that um, macro, Q string literal, uh, a temporary Q string whose destructor are then run and all the funny atomic operations that Q string copies um, perform. So if we just change this uh, in the API to queue any string view, disregarding how that looks in the implementation at, for the moment, um, we can now pass the same things and what was allocating before no longer allocates because queue any string view is just a view and it's accepting anything. It's accepting UTF-8 in the first case, Latin 1 in the second, and even queue strings. Um, that is now a pessimization because you still have the temporary queue string. If you would just write uh, U, uh, car 30 car 16 t literal um, you would not get the temporary q string insertion there and less code being executed at um, at call time in the caller so unlike q string view um, uh, q any string view was not designed to be overloaded with q string um, it is uh, designed to replace q string and any other overloads for any other string like types um, yeah, so at the moment, QString, any string has very little API. You basically, uh, it accepts everything. So it's, uh, it's there for its constructors. And then when you want to go in, um, you need to use visitation, like with a standard variant. Um, here's an example of how this looks. Um, and the goal here was to replace all that overload sets that we have in Qt with a QString view, QCar, QLatin1 string, UTF-8 string, const car star, and so on. And uh, just replace that overload set with the single function that takes QNA string view. And then only in the implementation farm out into uh, level uh, Latin 1, UTF-8, and UTF-16 implementations. The way this looks here is um, that basically um, you get a, any string view in, and then you call visit on it, passing a lambda, and then you can do the processing in there. And uh, this auto name variable will either be a QLatin1 string or a Q string view or a QUTF16, uh, a QUTF8 string. Um, and then you can just do the thing. Here we just call to string, um, which returns a Q string from all of these views. And since that is so common, that's already an API on QNE string view. So if all we do is uh, building a Q string, why take a QNE string view in the first place? There are several reasons. First, um, we have now one place in the library um, behind the API boundary where the queue string is being constructed, as opposed to at the call side with a temporary queue string object, which litters every call side um, with a queue string construction and a memory allocation, um, which does the same thing as a sequence of executable assembler instructions, but of course it, uh, it's duplicated for each caller. Whereas if you take if you do this in the library, you only have a single place where this is being done. Second, we have now gained that the implementation no longer is forced to store the thing as a queue string, but it can, for example, store it in a U16 uh, string, standard U16 string to get uh, the SSO, small, small string optimization, or in some small small vector in Qt that's called QVAR length array. So, um, or maybe you're even pre-processing the string anyway, and you would anyway cause a detach from that uh, from the queue string that you are being passed. Um, like for example, in queue settings, we have this uh, key um, that you can look up, and there's an actual pre-processing step, and so uh, we don't actually lose anything because we anyway create a queue string and clean up the key before passing it to the backend. So. Um, if all we do, yeah, 
or maybe you're just parsing and not storing at all. And if Qt is so far away from your day work, then um, just look at the basic F-stream seaters constructors lately, and you will understand that the standard library has the same problem. So that's the present. Uh, what about the future? Um, I will skip that because I'm short in time. Um, I just wanted to show this here as the end slide um, for Jens because we were talking uh, in the in the Q and A about this. Um, this is um, how to um, format numbers uh, using the new standard two cars um, function that we got in C plus plus seventeen, but uh, with have without having to set up a buffer first manually. We're using the CSS idiom, the compiler, uh, the scholar supplied storage idiom, um, to get a buffer into which we then format the data and then we return it as a, a Latin one string. And uh, since we return a Latin one string, we're automatically compatible with all the Qt infrastructure. And with that, I thank you. Okay, thank you, Mark.